Hey, Dave from Head Games here. Mitsubishi guys, I heard you. We're gonna do a 4B11 teardown. Seen some action in China, doing some road racing, making about 500 horsepower, had some damage. Let's see why. So this has been gone a while. It got a 4B-3, but it actually got a pocket port R package. Now this is something that we don't offer anymore. We do bronze guides, valve job, uh, chambers, lash mill, assemble, and um, unfortunately we just do the pocket port now. We don't do the chamber anymore. So check this out. Valve job looks very round now. Now usually there's angles here. This is all very shiny. Now this shows that we had some serious valve float going on. So we don't even have to look at the valves yet. We can see all in here how shiny that 45 degree angle is. And that this is the angle that the valve seats on. And if it's just hitting it and striking it and it's not actually sealing to it, it's gonna make it very, very shiny. We flip the head over and we're going to take a look at the cam journals. You can see here there is some cam scoring. Um, the journals are scoring from, it looks maybe a little bit of trash. It could be just from maybe some oil starvation uh, because the head wouldn't be sealing or it could seal more, but there is definitely some valve float and with valve float, maybe they're making up for something uh, that's missing. The bucket holes look also really well. Um, they don't really see, I mean, the head's definitely reusable and I um, don't see anything crazy. Nothing that can't just be polished out. Now, if you take a look back here though, look at this one and there is a lot of scoring. There's almost, it looks like there is no oil at all in here uh, because it pulled all of the metal. It, that's when you know that there's some oil starvation and it starts pulling the metal because the bucket's coming in and out like this and it just makes the same striations that you would have from the action of that into the bucket hole. What we'd have to do here is we'll polish it, we'll measure it, see if we can get it all out, and hopefully it's reusable. All right, now let's check out the camshafts. Now we have an idea of what they're gonna look like because we've seen the cylinder head. Uh, we definitely have seen here where we have some of that, some junk went through the motor or oil starvation. Uh, as we discussed on the bucket side, you see that right here. Uh, you can feel it, you can hear it, right? When you can hear it, you know that either A, you can polish it out, um, but then we're gonna make the journal smaller, so we'd have to polish it and measure it. Now, for you guys that are taking out your camshafts, I know there's some 2JZ guys that watch these videos and thinking, oh man, the billet cams took out my bucket. Well. Here we have the same situation going on. This is a cast cam, it's a uh, Kelford cam. And if you look here, this right here is gonna show you where it was beating the cam up. Can you see the color change right around there? So this is the acceleration side of the camshaft and it just beats the buckets up. If you can see it right here, maybe this color changes better for you. Um, so this is where it starts beating the bucket up and it strikes the bucket and guess what the bucket looks like. Look at that. 
Look at that. I know it's hard to see. We're working. Toby's trying to work for it. We get it. So it just beats the center of the bucket up. And uh, you can see all of these had serious issues with valve flow. Uh, now, I didn't take all of them out. I just took some of the bad ones out. Um, but you can see there's big lines in it from where it was just spinning and uh, it was getting struck by the bucket. This one's starting to concave. Uh, this one too. This one's starting to concave because it's not supposed to strike the bucket. Uh, the camshaft is made to slide with the bucket. And when you have a valve float situation, the bucket is now fluttering at the top of the, of the bore and the cam just comes down and strikes it and it's just gonna beat it up. All right, let's go check out the valve train first. We're gonna start with the valves. The valves tell us a big story about what's going on in the cylinder head. We, we know that there is some valve flow. Where does that show up on the valve? Check this out. So whenever there is valve flow, it will start making a step. Remember I showed you the, how the uh, valve seat was looking very shiny. Well, this is the area right here. This is the 45 degree angle that the valve seats on. And this part right here is basically beating into the valve seat. And when this happens, we're gonna lose spring pressure. You can see that here as well. Uh, it's also worth noting that there was a lot of heat. If you can see here, this was a lot of heat into the valve. Um, we don't know why at the moment, but there was definitely heat coming up uh, the valve stem. So when we have valve flow, the issue here is that as the valve beats into the 45 degree angle of the seat, we're gonna start losing spring height. When we start losing spring height, the spring is gonna basically act like a slinky. It's gonna be all over the place and it will do this seesaw effect. It'll tighten up lash. It's gonna do all these things uh, until it comes apart. Now that's exactly what Terrence did. Terrence was seeing that the lash was tightening up. So he took the cams out he put different buckets in it. Instead of fixing the actual problem, he kind of band-aided it and just ignored it. Uh, now, this means that, you know, when you have an idea, you think that you could take a step back and do the first thing would be to see why is it tightening up lash? Well, it's tightening up lash because of valve flow. And you don't want to just band-aid something like that. It is going to be a failure. And failure is what we had. All right, so what we got going on here is a broken valve spring. Now, this could have been avoided. Uh, it said if he were to have just thought about the, why is it tightening up lash? We could have avoided this, maybe not create any kind of situation where a valve spring is breaking. Valve springs don't break on their own, I promise you this. But they will break when there is a situation where they're flying all over the place uh, and they're not installed at the correct height, or in this case, they became the wrong height. When looking at the valve, you can also see valve flow on the top. So before you even get it apart, you can look at the top of the valve and you'll see marks in it. They'll look like little dots or uh, in the center will be beat in, and that's from the bucket beating it in, or um, it'll look like some oil starvation because it'll just pull on the metal and that's really it's just beating the valve beating itself into the bucket. The bucket's not in control. It's slamming everything uh, because it's fluttering and the cam's hitting it. It's a mess. All right, so let's take a minute to take a look at our valve train for the Evo 10. Now, when I say our valve train, I'm saying that Head Games is the only one that has a retainer that you can combine a GSC retainer or a GSC valve spring with a Faria valve. I say that because the Ferrea is actually made to use their Honda lock. It's not made to use the factory Evo 10 lock, unlike the GSC. The GSCs are centered around using the factory valve lock. When using the factory lock with a Ferrea valve, you can see that the difference is dramatic. It really, the valve lock sits very deep in the retainer and that changes your spring height, whereas the head games uh, it sits at the correct height. So the takeaway from this video should be if you start seeing wear on any of your cylinder head parts and you think that if you just kind of band-aid it that a miracle happens and that's just not going to happen again or we're just going to deal with that later, I hope you just rethink that first thought, back off of that, fix what's wrong at first.
first and then we will not have a catastrophic failure nothing's going to break and and there's going to be happiness so be sure to like and comment below i'd love to hear from you toodles